my channel. It is it, the end of quarter one of the reading year. Of the whole year, actually. But, like, we're going to be talking about books. So, if you like this video, and let me know in the comments below. But, if you want me to do this, but in reverse, where I tell you about the worst books, I've read so far this year, I can do that. I'm trying to be less of a negative Nelly and more of a positive Polly. Is it positive Polly? I don't know. But I'm trying to be more of a positive person. So for that reason, I have my top nine books of the year. So technically, I was looking back at my ratings, and technically eight of these are five star books, and one of them is four star books on Goodreads, but the longer that I think about it, the longer that it melds with me, the more I want to give it that fifth star. So these are the best books I've read in 2023 they are all going to be five stars i don't know what i was thinking when i first rated one of them and we will talk about it so we are going to go from 10 to 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 5 4 3 2 1 you know so obviously i loved all of these but they are in the correct order. Surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, I have a lot of thrillers and I have a lot of heartbreak books. Heartbreak books, yes, they're, they're books that will break your heart in half. So <laughs> follow me for a real fun time. The first book is A Whomper. A whomper. A whopper. She big, okay? But y'all know what they say. I, I like big books and I cannot lie. So, <laughs> number 10 is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is a small town grumpy sunshine romance, but it's more than that. This is like family drama and it's like when your evil twin sister calls you up and invites you to the small town that you've never been to and it, it, it's your wedding day. Do you go on with the wedding or do you go rescue your evil twin sister? Well, Naomi decided that Tina needed needed to be saved. So she went to the small town in Virginia, Vermont, um, something. And um, while she's there, Tina, while she's there, someone steals her car and leaves her abandoned. And then she finds out, Naomi finds out, that Tina has a daughter, an 11 year old daughter, who uh, Tina left with Naomi. And this is like the story of Tina and Naomi butting heads. And Tina's really evil. And she starts doing something she's not supposed to be. And she gets into a situation that she can't handle. So, of course, she has to call her twin sister, Naomi, to help bail her out bail her out but then it's also the family dynamic I don't remember the niece's name because it has been a little bit but um you have this 11 year old niece and her aunt who she's never met who she just thought hated her for no apparent reason and they're trying to you know figure things out together but then you have Knox who you know Everyone says he's an a-hole and everyone's like, oh, he's such a grump. But secretly, he's so sweet. And, you know, Naomi and Knox, mm, I ship it. 
Do you ship it? Have you read it? Do you need to read it? If you haven't, you definitely do need to read it. Then number nine. Ooh, ooh, number nine. Is the Sorority Murder by Allison Brennan. I just read this one in March and I really loved it. So you follow this guy named Lucas who is for his final project in college. He's doing this like podcast to find out what happened to this girl named Candace who went missing three years ago. And they found her body, so they know that she was murdered, or they think she was murdered. But Lucas is going to crack the case open and figure out what actually happened to her. And there are twists and turns down every alleyway you go through. So again, if you haven't read The Sorority Murder by Alison Brennan, please do. Plus... Hey, this is the first in a series. The second in the series is coming out at the end of April, I believe. Number eight is uh, a heartbreaker. So if you can't handle tears, like sobbing, ugly cry tears, look away. This book is not for the faint of heart. And that is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I don't know why I said her name like that. But, <laughs> oh my gosh, my sweater matches this book. Like, ooh, 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 yeah, yeah, Zeen and Josiah, who have been divorced for two years. And they are still learning how to co-parent and co-own this restaurant together. And to be quite honest with you, the first 150 pages or so are very mundane day-to-day -day life. Like, just live a day in my life kind of book and something about the 150 page mark just shifted it went from oh this is very mundane to oh my gosh this is their life and it was very eye-opening to like everyone knows the phrase there are two sides to every story what if that story was the same for Josiah and Yasmin even though they're divorced what if the story isn't what's different, but how we come, how we break apart from that story and become better or just heal and move on from that story, from our life. There are trigger warnings for about a million things in here that... I probably shouldn't go over because spoilers, but some of the really big ones are grief and obviously divorce, but the reason for the divorce, which I can't say because again, spoilers, but one of the biggest reasons is something that no couple should ever have to go through, no woman should ever have to go through but unfortunately we live in a world well no it's just healthcare doesn't know how to prevent something like that but it made me sob my eyes out so if you want a good therapy session and you don't have money to visit a therapist just read Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan and you will feel seen and heard and if it doesn't break you, then I'm not sure what will. Number seven! Woo -woo. 
I really thought this one would be higher up on the list. <laughs> but number seven is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rulick. I read this one back in January and it's so vividly in my mind. I think one of the main reasons that I love this book is actually why most people didn't like this book and it's because of the ending. Like this ending is so polarizing. I'm not going to tell you what it is because spoilers, but in Hidden Pictures you follow this woman named Mallory who is struggling with addiction. She is just became clean and then somehow this handy dandy nanny job just basically falls into her lap because this very rich family needs someone to watch their son Teddy. Teddy seems like a regular old kid, goes outside and plays, mm, no. Teddy seems like a regular old kid. He likes to stay inside and he likes to draw pictures, you know, and they look like, sec you know, they look like five-year-olds could draw, yeah, like this, yeah. So he kind of just draws everywhere he goes. And then these weird occurrences keep happening and everyone says that the cottage that Mallory is living in behind their house is haunted and that's how everything is explained. And you wonder, is, Malibu, is, is Mallory reliable for one? For two, is her house haunted? Or three, is something more sinister happening? And four, what is going on with Teddy's pictures? They start off as just like a typical five-year-old drawing stick figures and then they turn into that and even creepier pictures and just like what is going on? I absolutely loved the action-packed ending, but I've read reviews and people don't like how contemporary the ending is. <clears throat> Number six. Ah! Number six is the first romance. No, 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 no. The second romance on this list. And the last one, <laughs> and that is Do I Know You by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigma Broca. These people right here, Emily and Austin, they're a married couple who write books together. What? Eliza and Graham's fifth wedding anniversary. So weird. It's my fifth wedding anniversary too with my husband, husband. Anyways, Eliza and Graham, uh, Eliza's mom got them this vacation to kind of spark things up. And uh, <laughs> somehow problems happen and the hotel accidentally books two rooms. Not wanting the two rooms to go to waste, Eliza decides she'll stay in her own hotel room during this anniversary visit. Graham got the honeymoon suite. So when they meet at the bar after they get situated in the hotel, Graham is talking to this guy, I think his name's David, um, but he's talking to this guy, you know, they're just becoming friends, kind of. And uh, David introduces Eliza and Graham to each other, like, hey, do you know? Yeah, you know? Okay. And they introduce, he introduces them. And instead of being like, oh no, that's my wife, oh no, that's my husband, instead of doing that, because, you know, that's no fun, uh, 
they're like, oh, well, how nice it is to meet you. And then they start kind of swooning over each other and going on these romantic dates. And is it enough to save their vital marriage? Or is it just too little too late? You have to read it to find out. I think we're on number four. Oh, did I say Four, 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 four. That I buddy read with one of my besties. And that is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. This was so good. So I'm just going to read this part because I can't. This has so many layers to it that I can't justify just reading or like telling you about it because I'm going to miss something. So they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison. They were heroes, but they were liars. So Naomi was attacked when she was 11 in the woods and she put someone to prison for this who I think he ended up dying in prison. And now, because he died, now her and her friends are kind of talking about it more. And you slowly get puzzle, puzzle pieces of what happened when they were 11. And if they were telling the truth or if they were lying. And uh, it was just such an emotional roller coaster for a thriller. So it is a thriller. But my emotions were on high alert during this book. Like way up here, I was crying. I was screaming in fear. I was shutting my book and throwing it. Well, I only did that once. But like, oh, this, you know it's a good book when you are ugly crying in one breath and then scared to pick up the book in the next breath. Number three, 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 three. This is the one that says it's a four star on <laughs> Goodreads, but um, I'm changing that because this one's really stuck with me. And that is Stay Awake by Megan Golding. <sighs> So, you follow Liv. Okay. A murder she doesn't remember committing. A killer she doesn't remember meeting. Memory can be deadly. So, this is Liv. You follow Liv, who's in New York City. And she wakes up in the hospital. And she realizes slowly, very, very slowly. So this is a very slow burn thriller. It's very slow and very intense. But she finds out that she's missing five years of her life. And she goes to her old apartment and the couple living there is like, no, that's, you don't live here, hon. And he, then like things kind of escalate really quickly from there because like someone come knocking on your door and then was like, hey, it's my house, get out. Like, that'd be scary, right? Uh, so yeah, things just kind of escalate from there and you slowly realize what happened to her and how she lost her memory and why she lost her memory and I just love a good memory loss trope. So if you want to be like, what the hell is going on? What? Am I reading this correctly? What? Wait, but there's such a gap. I'm so confused. But I love it. Then read Stay Awake by Megan Golding. All right, our final two. Number two is All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. This is yet again another adult thriller. This one follows Drake, Isabel, Isabel. 
who one year ago today, her son was kidnapped from her bedroom and she hasn't slept since then. She's still investigating, trying to figure out what happened to her son and hopefully get her son back. But you know, there's a dark twist. She's very unreliable because she can't sleep. And um, hmm, it goes places that I was not expecting. This is by far my face my favorite Stacey Willingham, but I mean, she only has two books out so far, but please pick this one up if you like, um, dark and scary and terrible things. And my number one favorite book of 2023 so far is Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. So, if you saw my March, oh wait, no, this will come out before my March map, my March wrap up. This follows Una, who in 1982, it's about to be 1983, and she was born on January 1st, so it's also her birthday. Uh, but on her 19th birthday, Right at midnight, as the ball drops in New York, Una wakes up and she's 51. Her body is 51, but inside her head she's only 19. And she has completely lost everything from her life. So she lives out the year and then the following year on New Year's or her birthday, she wakes up and she's like 24. So she lives her life in this weird, crazy order. So it's kind of time travel -y and it also has this really beautiful memory loss type of thing because like she doesn't, she hasn't lived out her life. So when she wakes up from 19 to 51, she lost all that time and people have to explain small details to her until she slowly starts gaining her own memories. But that would be so beautiful, but so terrifying, right? And then on top of that whole like out of order, on top of the whole time out of order, life out of order, you follow Una, who she just, like, she has some very bad, hard things happen to her, and, like, those things made me sob, but I can't tell you because of spoilers, but, like, she goes through these losses and these griefs, but then she wakes up in a different year and maybe she's never been in that time. So she doesn't know that any of that happened. And a lot of this book is very like theoretical and like, okay, so if you knew the love of your life was going to die a year after you met him or a year after you got to marry him, would you still marry him? Or would you rather not have that heartbreak? Or like you and your, you and your significant other end up breaking up and the breakup is really messy. The divorce is nasty. You guys are mean to each other and just terrible. But that divorce doesn't happen until you're 26. You meet this amazing man where you could have this really amazing love story but you go from 26 when you're getting divorced from this stranger because like you really don't remember him and then you wake up and then you're 20 years old and you're just now meeting the man that you just divorced would you do it over again even if you knew it ended in heartbreak like, even if 
you knew that there was immense pain coming for you? Would you fall in love? Would you go on that adventure? Or would you just kind of sit on the sidelines and be like, well, I know it's going to end badly, so I'm just not going to live my life. And that is why Una Out of Order is so beautiful. Like, oh my gosh. I did not mean to cry. But just talking about this book. <sighs> clearly, if you like to read for emotion. Please pick up Una Out of Order. Because it's so wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. I will see you in the next video. Bye!